over to you on your left break, traffic's gonna be at Beechcraft turning down when I told you behind. Cessna 512 Romeo Roger, good afternoon, on terminus 3003, runway 3, tax to be alpha. Alright, hello guys, and welcome to the uh, second video I'm posting up here on YouTube. Um, I was very surprised of how much views I had on the first one. Um, I got some really good comments, and I thank y'all for that. And it seems like y'all do want some, uh, some more videos. So, um, I decided to make one. It's, uh, I believe it's, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night, uh, 7.30, and uh, I decided to kind of make a video, uh, what I want to show y'all, I do want to show y'all, I'm going to kind of go over some basics on this video, like I said, I do want to make kind of a teaching video aspect, so I do want to go over basic, the basic things, I do want to concentrate on this video, there is a few, I might not get all of them done, it depends how much traffic, and if they actually do what um, I'm asking them to do or what I want them to do but I, I do want to go over the traffic pattern um, because that was it looked like uh, that was what a couple of people most people want to do in AT and FSX is they want to do the traffic pattern so I kind of want to go over the basics on the traffic pattern the basic lakes um, I do want to go over VFR and IFR the difference between them I want to go over the phonetic alphabet um, I want to go over the ATIS I want to go over getting traffic advisories, I want to go over takeover and landing clearance. Those are the things I do want to go over. I may not get all of them done in this video, it just depends, like I said, if, if uh, we are able to cover it all or not. But uh, basically, we'll all start right now, since I just put up the session, we do have some time here, is I'll start with the ATIS. The ATIS is uh, A-T-I-S, it stands for Automated Terminal Information System. Pretty much what the ATIS is, it's a continuous broadcast that records weather information, active runways, approaches, and any additional information. And it's represented with a letter. So right away, I probably have to connect, uh, cover phonetic alphabet first. The phonetic alphabet is a set of words that's designated with the letters. So instead of saying uh, A, B, C, D, E, we say Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Delta, Echo. Pretty much every single letter has a word coordinated with it. And if able, I will put up a uh, a picture on so you can kind of see what every letter represents for this portion. But all we, we use the same thing all the time. Um, if you look at the radar, it's actually, if you look next to where it says Lahu, it says it's P-H-L-I. And what we call it is Papa Hotel Lima, India. As air traffic control, you have to be able to read it really quick. The same thing as pilots. Pilots and air traffic control use the same thing. So instead of me calling someone N350, I call them November 350. Um, same thing with the taxiways. If I zoom in here, when you notice when I'm giving taxi clearance, I don't say to taxi to the runway. If we look at this right here, and we'll, we'll explain. But if you, if you just look at it, you see an H. You can see an H. An H is in the middle. I don't say taxi to the runway via taxiway H. I say taxi to the runway via taxiway hotel because that's what the phonetic alphabet says. Same thing with the A. I don't say taxi to runway via taxiway A. I say taxi to runway via taxiway alpha. So uh, that's basically a little on the phonetic alphabet. Now let's go back to the ATIS. Like I said, the ATIS is a continuous recording in real in real life, a guy will actually sit there and record the ATIS information every hour. In FSX, it's a computer that records it, and there's a designated frequency that you tune to in order to get the ATIS information. If you look, actually, when I post the information in the chat box, I say the phonetic alphabet, the, the, the identifier, which is Papa Hotel Lima, India, and it's Lahu Airport. I kind of give a little ATIS information. I give them, remember I said the ATIS information contains weather information. I don't give the weather information in the chat box, but active runways, I do look. Visual runway 3 is in use, and then the iOS approach for runway 3.5 is in use. So right away, we know runway 3 and 3.5 is in use. And then I actually give the frequency. ATIS frequency is 127.2. So let's go ahead and listen to the ATIS information, and then I'll kind of break it down to you what it says. Um, when we listen to it at first, it's going to say Lahu Airport Information and then it's going to say Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, and I'll explain what that, but let's just listen to it real fast. Thank you, airport information, go back, 23072, wind calm, facility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, view clouds at 5,600, temperature 15, 2.5, altimeter 3003, ILS, runway 35, in use, landing and departing, runway 35. VFR aircraft, steady direction of flight, all aircraft, read back, short instruction, device controller on initial contact. 
Okay, what I, what I really want to concentrate on that is, is look, it says on the top, and we can read it, it says, Lahu Airport Information Romeo, and then it says the time that the information is given, it says the wind, the wind is calm right now, visibility is greater than 20 miles, so it, it's, it's in VFR, which I'll explain that later, the sky conditions is few clouds at 5,600. Gives you temperature, the dew point, and altimeters, which is 3003. And then after that, it will give you the runways that are in use. And at the end, it says advise on initial contact that you have information, Romeo. So when people contact me, in order for me to know that they actually tune to that frequency and listen to the ATIS information, they give me a letter. Or they get, they say, they say, Warbird 2. Like, okay, let's look at Warbird 2. He's going to say... Wait, where is he at right now? He's on the ground. So when he contacts me, he's going to say, Tower, we have information, Romeo, and we like taxi to the active runway. Now, if that recording says that it was information, Charlie, and he says he has information, Romeo, obviously, he has the wrong information. I could tell him to look at it again. In FSX, I don't really, I don't really make people listen to the ATIS. They could if they want. But like I said, if we, if we looked at the first video, if they don't tell me that they have the information, I will give them the altimeter because that's basically the altimeter. They need to put the altimeter setting in the, the airplane because if they don't, right now Warbird, he's at, he's at ground level. He, let's just say he's at zero feet. It'll show in his aircraft that he's at 500 feet if he doesn't give the right ATIS information. And that's really bad if you think about it because Especially when you can't see when there's a lot of clouds, you don't know where the ground is. So basically, that's what the ATIS is. Um, it's just a recording that gives all of the information for the pilot. In real life, the ATIS updates every hour. In FSX, the ATIS updates every 15 minutes. So if you notice when I'm doing ATC, I probably won't do it in this game because I didn't update it. But whenever I'm doing ATC, you'll hear me say information Romeo now current and then I give the altimeter. Every pretty much every 15 minutes I try to say it because like I said the information does change. Sometimes clouds come in, sometimes altimeter changes, sometimes the weather changes. Whenever I say the new information is current then you know that gives, kind of gives you a hint that something changed or you can go listen to the, to the new information. So we got the we got the uh, the ATIS out of the way. Um, so let's go ahead and start controlling. Warbird 2 is back in my session over here if you look at him. Now he is at the uh, he's at he's at the ramp. He doesn't have to contact me. A lot of things that I noticed on other ATC sessions, um, I do fly myself and I've noticed once I get on the ground, they contact me right away and say, Hey, are you there? I know that they contact me because they're worried that I'm actually not there and that or they know they're worried that I'm actually there but I'll see okay look at what we're to right now perfect example he moved did you see him move but he's not on a taxiway so I don't I can't tell him anything but what I'm saying is that if you do ATC don't call them sometimes what a lot of people do in FSX is they do a checklist at first and they have to sometimes they can be on the ground for I've had a guy be on the ground for I'm not even kidding 35 minutes maybe 40 minutes and then he'll call me but the whole time he wasn't even on the ground there's a lot of add-ons he was actually doing a checklist he was loading up passengers he was starting his airplane he was putting the information and he was they make some crazy airplanes out there where you got to do everything like real world pilots and it takes you a while to do it so Mustang, Warbird 2, radio check. Warbird 2, 5x5. Alright, so if you see there, Warbird 2 gave me a radio check. Um, so we know he's going to kind of contact me. What, 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 what I was just trying to express is, is, you know, just wait for him. Just wait for him to contact you. He's not in. He's not in the way of anything right now. He's not on your taxiways. Now, let, let's start. Let's start. Like I said, ATC anticipates a lot. Warbird 2, we know we're going to taxi him to runway 3. Okay, so we start thinking, okay, runway three, we're going to taxi him via which taxiway? We're going to taxi him via Alpha. So right away when he contacts me, we listen to see if he has the ATIS information. We know what the ATIS is now. So we listen to see if he has, if he's going to tell me with information, Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Romeo, Charlie, whatever. He tells me that, go ahead and just taxi him. If he doesn't Warbird tell me. Information, get back, ready to taxi right close. Warbird 2, good afternoon, runway three, taxi via Alpha. Runway 3, taxi via Alpha, two. Alright, so if you notice, he did give me the information and I taxied him. Um, I taxied him to runway 3 via Alpha. Now, what he requested, let me write this down real fast, because we're going to talk about that next. The traffic pattern. War Bird 2. He's going to runway 3. He's a P-51, and he's tax uh, he, he, he said Warbird 2, 
ready to taxi for right closed. What that pretty much means is he wants to do the traffic pattern, which I'm going to talk about. And he wants to do it. He wants to do a traffic pattern on the right side of the runway. So let me put that right closed traffic. All right, so let's talk about the traffic pattern real fast while World War II, uh, II is taxing here. There is five legs of the traffic pattern. If you look at my mouse, you kind of follow them up. Once you take off, you are on your upwind leg. And when you turn, he's, he's going to be doing right traffic pattern. So if we look at my mouse, he's going to go straight. When he turns to the right, he is on what is called the crosswind leg. And then when he turns and he goes start going down, he is on the downwind leg. And then when he turns again, he's on the base leg. And when he turns again, he's on the final leg. Those are the five tra the five legs that we expect you as pilots to know. If I tell you to start your downwind now, then you start a downwind. If I tell you to start your base now, then you start a base. I'll put a chart up so we can kind of, you know, if you want to pause the, the video real fast and kind of see the basics of the, the traffic pattern, I have it there. But what, what Warbird 2 is, he actually did a request. He asked for right traffic. So when I, when he's ready to go, Let's talk about real fast takeoff and landing clearance. When he requests takeoff, there is a couple of things I'm obligated to tell him. I'm telling him which runway he is cleared to take off. I'm telling him the wind, and I'm gonna tell him which traffic to make. I have to tell him to make right traffic because you know he requested it, and I, I gotta tell him that. So when he contacts me, I'm gonna tell him he's clear, and, and I also gotta add obviously cleared for takeoff. That's the one thing that they listen that 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 pilots would listen to they want to just listen to cleared for takeoff because that means that they're actually clear for takeoff and if there's an airplane coming in and i clear him for takeoff that's that's on me so i need to make sure that when i clear him for takeoff Mac, he's actually ready to clear for takeoff let me zoom into my my delta here maybe i'll make a video on air spaces but for right now like I said, we're just concentrating on the traffic pattern. Warbird 2 is going to take off, and he's going to make his five legs. One, two, three, four, five. And he's going to keep on doing that. And I wonder why he requested right traffic, but... So Warbird 2 is ready for departure, runway 3. Warbird 2 wins come, runway 3, clear for takeoff, make right traffic. Make right traffic, clear for takeoff, runway 3, Warbird 2, thanks. Alright, so if you listen, I called his call sign. I said runway three, which is the runway he's on. I cleared him for takeoff, and then I told him the winds. The winds is calm, and then I told him to which traffic. So I, I gave him the five basics that I need to do. The runway, he's clear for takeoff. The winds, and which traffic actually it's four. But I, I, you add all those four. It really, I want to say it really doesn't matter which, in which order you add it. A lot of people say. Warbird 2, win, calm, runway 3, clear for takeoff, make right traffic. That's the same of saying Warbird 2, runway 3, clear for takeoff, winds, calm, make right traffic. What I'm trying to say is it, it, it doesn't really matter which order. Um, as long as you give it in that, in that, uh, as long as you give those basics, then it'll be fine. So I guess we're going to have to watch Warbird 2 here. Another thing is air traffic controllers is... If you don't have to bother them, don't bother them. He's probably having a hard time flying that P-51 because I know from experience P-51 is really hard. So if I don't have to bother him, don't bother him. I know it sounds quiet on the radio and maybe you want to, you know, say something to make yourself sound busy or something. But if you don't have to, don't. So now let's talk about clearance to land. Air traffic controllers can clear you to land on any leg of the traffic pattern. I can clear Warbird 2 in for the option right now. It doesn't matter which leg. We as air traffic controllers prefer to clear them in on the downwind or the base leg. There's two ways that people can do it. I can tell Warbird 2 to call his midfield downwind. What that means is if let's look at the legs. He is on his upwind. He is turning right now to his crosswind. After he's done his crosswind, he's going to turn to a downwind. Now, I told him to call his midfield downwind. So, let's just think about it. Obviously, midfield is when you're in the middle of the field. So, it would be probably, if you look at my mouse, it would probably be about right here and his downwind. So, I wanted to call when he's right here. But I didn't tell him he has to call it. So, automatically, it was my job to look at him. And when he's midfield downwind, I clear him in for the option. The option means that the runway is yours. Like I said in my first video. 
you can do whatever you need to on the runway. The reason I clear him in for the option is because look at the airspace. There's no one else in here, so he can do whatever he wants. Same thing with takeoff clearance. I have to explain. I have to make sure I say which runway it is, the wind, and that he's cleared. So as long as I add those, I'll be fine. So let me do that right now. Warbird 2, runway 3, clear for the option. Wind's calm. Runway 3, clear for the option. Warbird 2.